So if you're an animator, gamer, filmmaker, architecture student, or even that person who blogs on YouTube, then you certainly heard of FPS, which is frames per second, or also known as frames frequency. But there are so many different frame rates that you can film at or even animate your projects at. You have 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 50 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, even 240 frames per second. But what do these different frame rates mean? Is a higher frame rate better? Something in the middle or something lower? That is what we're going to answer today in this video. And speaking of frames per second, if you haven't seen my recent upload, which is, it looks a lot like Christmas, it's a short animation project I've made, which coincidentally, I rendered it at 25 frames per second. And normally when I use Lumion, I tend to render my projects at 30 or even 60 frames per second. But I did 25 frames per second for this project, and you're going to see why shortly. For those of you who may not be too familiar with FPS is, frames per second, it denotes the frequency in consecutive images or frames that constitutes one second in your clip. And to illustrate that even better, let's take this magazine for example. Let's say this magazine is like a five second clip. The everything together is a five second clip. Each individual page in this magazine is going to be a frame or an image in your clip. Putting each of those images together is what's going to constitute the movement and create the movement inside your clip. So every still image, and you've most likely seen this in those like cool flipbook animations, every single image constitute of a single frame. So some have less frames, or for example, 30 frames in one second, while other clips may have more frames, such as 60 frames. Therefore, if we just take 60 as our example, it means that there are 60 consecutive images back to back that makes up one second of your clip. So more frames in your clip, that sounds fantastic, right? Does it mean it's better? If you're a gamer watching this, you're going to say, Daniel, 60 frames or higher, go big or go home, case closed. I would agree with you actually. Having more frames, especially when you're playing video games, is really good because video games are set in these 3D environments where there's a lot of movement, a lot of things happening at the same time. And more often than not, if you don't have a high frame rate on your computer, you won't be able to get that smooth, movement the more frames there is think of it as information so the more information you have for every single clip the more the movement is going to be smooth a nice interesting way of illustrating that did this really really bad drawing but i want you to think of it like this so let's say your clip let's say this is your clip right the the shape is your clip and the edges are the different frames that constitute your clip so the more edges or the more frames you have, right, it's going to smooth it out. So if you compare this pentagon to this shape, I don't even know how many edges I made, but the more edges you have, the more it becomes rounded out. And eventually you can have so many edges or so many frames that your shape almost look like a circle and it's so smooth. So that's a good analogy. So if you're playing things such as games, the more frames you have, the more smooth the movements will be. However, this is really a rule of thumb for gaming, but it's not true in every single case. But now if you're a filmmaker and you're watching this, you might say, Daniel, everybody purchases camera gear that could shoot 60 frames or higher. No one's going to just go for something that shoots 30 frames or lower, for example. And this is true again. However, the reason why people aim for equipment that shoots at higher frame rate is about versatility. So what I mean by versatility, if you have a camera that can shoot at 120 or 60 frames per second, which is more standard, it is implied for most cameras that if it can shoot at 60 frames per second, it can also shoot at 30, 25, 
24, so on and so forth. So it's really about having versatility rather than if you go a camera where the standard is 30 frames per second, Unfortunately, you won't be able to go higher than that if you need to go higher than that. And as we're going to go over, you're going to see that there are certain circumstances where you need a higher frame rate and other circumstances where a lower frame rate might work a lot better. So now here is the bulk of the question. What are the differences between all these different frame rates? Well, I actually filmed a few clips and I want to demonstrate it for you. But before we demonstrate it, let's go over some basic definitions. Let's start off with 60 frames per second and 50 frames per second. Honestly, there is little to no difference between the two. 60 frames per second is what's mainly used in the US, while when you go to the United Kingdom, the UK, 50 frames per second is more common in the gears that they manufacture. I guess the only other noticeable difference between the two is that when you're shooting with 60 frames per second, the output of the file is going to be larger than 50 frames per second which is a given because there's more frames, therefore more, a little bit more information within your clip. And so those are really the differences between the two. You will typically see 60 and 50 frames per second in news stations. And essentially the reason why they use this is because it has really good real time feedback. So when you're filming with this, you're, you're, um, your scene or rendering your scene, it looks as if you're actually turning and moving into the space. And there's no type of like weird um, blurs or things like that. There is a lot of information in those clips and it's very, very smooth. And of course, if you go up to 120 frames per second, which is used by a lot of professional cinematographers used for gaming, there's so much information for each frame that it's really, really smooth, no choppy movements. So there are two major advantages for shooting at 60 frames slash 50 frames per second and higher. The higher the frame rate, the cleaner and smoother, slow down clips begin to look inside your project. So why is that the case? If you think about it, there is a lot of frames for every second. Because there is a lot of information within that second, when you slow it down and you stretch it out, there is no awkward movements. There is enough information in each of those frames to still give you a clean and smooth movement even as you begin to slow down your clip. So definitely if you want to have slow motion effects in your videos or your animations, 60 frames and higher is really a must. This leads us to 30 frames per second. So similar to the 60 frames and 50 frames per second, 30 frames per second is more commonly used in the US while 25 frames per second is more commonly used in the UK. But is there a real difference between the two? Uh, slightly. I mean, given that 30 frames per second has more frames, therefore more information, and therefore a slightly bigger file size, Otherwise, there isn't a huge difference between the two. This frame rate you will typically see in your standard TV programming, um, which tends not to be like a news network where you need like real time feedback of something and it's not quite, you know, like a movie or anything. So it, 30 frames is a great middle ground for things where there are constant movement, for example, sports, but not any type of extreme movement, like for example, uh, an action movie or something like that. That leads us to 24 frames per second. 24 frames per second is wonderful for cinematic footages. And it's actually used a lot for Hollywood films today. But you might wonder, it's less frames in each second, therefore less information. So why is it cinematic? And the reason actually for this is because of the motion blur that's created from less frames. And why is there a motion blur? Because there are less consecutive images and frames each second, the thing is, is as those uh, images or stills are being put together, because more information has to be filled in between every single frame, now it creates a nice and smooth blur between each still, which ultimately gives you a nice motion blur as your camera is moving through the space. So definitely 
definitely if you want your animation or your clip to look less like a real time news report and more like uh, something that you see in your in the cinema, that's something you definitely want to consider shooting at something like 24 frames a second, maybe even slightly lower than that. But 24 is definitely a sweet spot and it's used by many professional animators and cinematographers. The downside is that if you are shooting something like 24 frames per second, it's not going to look so good when you slow it down. Unlike shooting at 60 frames per second, because of course there are less frames. So what ends up happening is that you see all the blur and it ends up looking very, very choppy. If you ever seen a Marvel movie, you know, that thing is shoot at a standard 24 frames per second. Everything's very smooth. But when it comes to the action scene, you notice that the, the camera movement seems a little bit different. It's very fast. It could even be that same type of camera that you see news reporters using. That is because for action scenes, they basically change the frame rate to something higher in order to really get all of those movements. And by getting all of those movements, what they're able to do is that if there's like a slow motion, someone's about to get punched, they can really slow it down and it's gonna look smooth and it's going to look very clean. So that's why, you know, sometimes when you're watching a movie, you might see a sudden shift, the camera might look a little bit more shaky, things like that. So I wanna actually quickly demonstrate how each of these things look. So I shot several clips. One set of clip is actually done on the tripod and the other set of clips was done handheld. And all of them are at 1080p. The only difference is basically the frame rate. Let's start off with the ones in the tripod. This is how it looks shot at 60 frames per second. 50 frames per second, which is basically very similar to the 60. Now take a look at 30 frames per second. And here we have 25 frames per second. And 24 frames per second. And now let's put some of them side by side so you can begin to see how different each of them are. And as you can see, the 60 and 50 frames per second has a more uh, real-time looking movement to it. Very um, jerky in a, in a type of way. That's, that's such a weird word to use. Goes with the movement. It's like as you're moving the camera, there's like no delay and it moves fluidly. Of course, for the other movements, it's a little bit more slow. It feels more gradual and it also feels you can begin to see a little bit of that motion blur as well. And now let's take a look at the handheld clips. So the first one is at 24 frames per second. The second one is at 30 frames per second. And the last one is at 60 frames per second. And now if we play all of them side by side, now you can really begin to see the differences between each of them. So let's answer the big question. Does it matter what frame rate you use when you're filming or rendering a clip? The answer is yes, it does matter. And the other question is, does a higher frame rate automatically means that your clip is going to look a lot better? Not necessarily. It really depends on what your intention for that clip is particularly. So to recap, 60 slash 50 frames and of course higher is really great if you wanna have slow motion clips or if you want clips that have more of a real time feedback, that is the best scenario to have 60 frames per second. 30 frames or 25 frames per second is just a lot better for more of your standard clips. If you don't really want that TV network looking image or if you 
really don't want something that's too slow, too much motion blur, and a look that's a bit more standardized, I should say, then 30 frames per second will be the best option to use in this case. Now, if you wanna go for something more cinematic and be able to have a bit of motion blur in your clips, then using something such as 24 frames per second, or in some cases, 25 frames per second, is going to be the best thing for your project. Let me know in the comment section below, which frame rate do you tend to do your videos at or tend to render your animations at? Do you prefer the appearance of one frame rate versus another? And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like. Also subscribe to this channel for more tutorials and videos covering topics such as these. And I hope to see each of you in the next video.